Okay. Uh, hi, so yeah, uh, we're from New York, uh, we're Snark.art and uh, when we started out we probably took a, maybe kind of a light-hearted uh, look at blockchain, uh, more from how can this technology be used in cases that are outside of finance or supply chain, can it be used for something creative and uh, at that time, this was uh, end of last year, we saw the initial projects, maybe you were aware of projects like CryptoPunks and CryptoKitties. These are like the first types of projects where they achieved something that's called digital scarcity. So this is an idea that, uh, you know, five years ago, if you created an interesting photograph, that photograph was easily replicatable. And the idea of tokenizing the photograph all of a sudden created uh, an instance on the blockchain that could not be duplicated. And that was the project uh, that was called CryptoPunks, which, which was these uh, 10,000 generated kind of funny looking 24 pixel by 24 pixel images of punks, punk girls, punk guys, punk uh, zombies. And uh, immediately after that project, another project came to be, which became extremely popular called CryptoKitties. And what CryptoKitties did was something kind of different in that they added a certain level of interactivity. So beyond uh, digital scarcity, you all of a sudden, if you have uh, two kitties, you could uh, breed them and create another kitty. Uh, not sure if I could say that these projects from um, artistic aesthetic are uh, very sophisticated. But they were super interesting and when we started looking at projects like this we decided what else can be done and this is kind of how snark.art came to be. Uh, we were kind of involved fairly heavily with the art community in Brooklyn in New York. Um, I participate often on um, video art projects and so uh, we decided that we will become a sort of a laboratory where we will provide almost like a technical arm for artists to try to use blockchain as a medium, not necessarily to um, create, a, like to tokenize their existing artwork only, but maybe do something else with it. And the something else we didn't have really an answer for, but we were very curious to see what uh, artists would come up with and it's actually quite interesting that it's um, for them the concept of blockchain technology is actually not that difficult to understand uh, and so some of the ideas that they come up with are a little bit you know they don't have a serious business use case but they're actually quite fascinating nevertheless and so we created uh, kind of our own little mini curation board because we have a lack of resources it's just uh, 10 of us working on this project and uh, we can't really do more than a couple of art projects at a time. And uh, we are getting ready to release our first project, uh, which I will talk about in this presentation. Uh, and then maybe I'll uh, talk about some issues that we're facing and also some other projects that we're considering and then maybe we can have a chat afterwards. So. The types of uh, experiments that we are currently looking into uh, are things like uh, communal experience, which is uh, where uh, in the traditional, and this is related to collective ownership, it's in the traditional sense, uh, people used to buy art, put it on their wall, um, enjoy it in the privacy of their own home, uh, maybe occasionally will get loaned to a museum and be seen outside of their homes or maybe they'll invite some friends over and see the artwork at home but uh, we're actually interested in seeing what what if an artwork can belong to thousand people and uh, what if uh, maybe these thousand people can somehow uh, enjoy this artwork together and how can this be achieved through the blockchain and this is kind of the first project that we're doing and I'll explain what that means uh, then there's different aspects of performance art. So imagine a performance where the actions are driven by, let's say, the blockchain community that votes for certain actions to happen. Uh, or there could be validation of action. It's essentially a performance that can be validated by blockchain and sponsored by people sitting anywhere in the world. They just are 
curious to invest in an idea and uh, the smart contract then distributes the funds uh, based on the validation that the act took place. So these are the types of things that we're playing around with. Um, but the first project is um, it's a work by a New York artist, Eve Sussman. So she created this work uh, about 15 years ago. Uh, it's, um, it's a piece that was inspired by um, a painting from 1656 by Diego Velasquez called Las Meninas. This is perhaps one of the most significant uh, works of the Western canon. It's, um, it's also extremely controversial. Um, let me just go to this work. So this is the painting. It's uh, perhaps... Um, what's interesting about this work, there's a couple of things that raise the controversy about this work. Uh, what's, Velasquez essentially paints himself in the image, but also, you know, it raises a question, what is he looking at? And uh, why is the mirror in the back reflecting the king and queen of Spain? It sort of doesn't make sense, quite make sense. So it, it raised a lot of questions as far as, uh, you know, the setup in the room. And uh, this painting has inspired a lot of works. Uh, uh, for example, Picasso did uh, something like 50 or 60 studies of the specific painting. And there's been several um, other um, works that were created uh, using this as the basis. But what Eve uh, was specifically interested in is to... She kind of saw this painting more as a film still. And um, what she was wondering about is what... If it's a film still, then what happened before and after this specific steel. It's also, uh, this painting predates photography by maybe two, three hundred years, uh, yet it has this kind of very, kind of, the characters in the, in the painting have a very strong uh, psychological presence that's more common in today's photography. Something like a Tina Barney photograph or other type of uh, family photography. Uh, and so she was very curious to explore the space. And so what I'm going to show a little bit is how this work was initially created. Uh, and then uh, kind of what Eve wanted to do with this uh, specific artwork. So the artwork itself is a 10 minute video. This is actually um, um, a steal from the video. That's actually a replication of the original uh, artwork. Um, and there's a couple of interesting other controversies I, that I'm aware of with this cross uh, on Velasquez. Uh, because if blockchain existed in uh, 1656, it might not have been a controversy. But uh, everybody knows that uh, Velasquez got knighted, which is the reason he has this cross in 1659. So there is some controversy of whether or not the cross was painted after the original painting was painted. But let me just go into a little bit kind of what we want to do with this piece. So uh, what Eve wanted to do was, if, if she wanted to look at this as a video, kind of to go into the space, she was also curious to see, can we go into pixel? Can we depixelate this uh, video and almost deconstruct the entire set? And so this is kind of where the blockchain is involved. What we're doing is we're uh, dividing this piece into over 2,000 little uh, real estates of a screen. So uh, essentially each um, future collector would own a square of the entire work and the actual experiment is in collaboration. It's kind of can these 2,000 or so collectors collaborate to try to recreate the piece or maybe partially maybe uh, in coal. And this is kind of what uh, Eve is interested in because the work itself is uh, currently uh, sitting in um, at least there's uh, at least two museums in New York and MoMA and Whitney in New York. It's in several museums uh, in Korea and Spain, but it's barely ever shown today. 
uh, and uh, Eve has the last uh, artistic proof copy of this work out of uh, 12 editions essentially this is the last one and what she's interested in is in this kind of communal ownership let's give this work out to thousands of people and hope that it doesn't just sit on a shelf in the museum but maybe has kind of a life beyond uh, where it's at today. So basically to create this work, uh, Eve had to recreate the original space uh, that takes place in Alcazar, Spain. Uh, this is uh, the actual reconstruction of, uh, that was built in Brooklyn in a warehouse. Um, the piece, you could see like a short video of this uh, reconstruction. So the, uh, Eve studied the original uh, documents of the architectural drawings and uh, some historical documents to get a uh, perfect replication of the actual space. Um, the paintings on the walls were replicated, the uh, dresses uh, and the outfits of uh, all the characters were uh, replicated to every detail. And this is actually, this building is uh, like, it's very close to where I live. It's a nice condo right now. It's uh, the whole thing was raised like since Brooklyn got popular. It's very difficult right now to find spaces like this. You may know this guy if you watch Games of Thrones. So yeah, a lot of work went into the actual creation. And the piece is quite beautiful. Uh, uh, I only saw it one time, even though I've known Eve for seven or eight years, I only saw it one time in the museum setting, um, which is, uh, I'm actually super excited that this work will be released and maybe uh, get uh, to be seen more. So this is actually a recreated space and and so now we begin to see potentially uh what velasquez is looking at or eve's interpretation of what he's looking at because what's actually inside the frame of the painting is only half as interesting as what's outside and so she's actually trying to be almost like a fly inside the room uh and explore the space before and after the what we know as uh las meninas the painting Uh, this is also interesting. What we see actually in um, in the TV screen is actually exact. Uh, it's a replic. It's it's this painting, the original painting, with all the characters removed, and this is the actual space that was rebuilt. So they were trying to be as close to the original detail as possible. And so now here we're starting to see the original artwork. This is just uh, maybe a minute of the... And here, uh, even though we're showing this randomized, this is really just for illustrative purposes because uh, what we're trying to do is we're gonna uh, distribute the pieces face down so, you, so that we can't have people just uh, pick and choose which squares initially. Uh, but uh, we want to have uh, a large community of owners owning the piece. And our kind of main interest is to see how they collaborate post-sale. So once they own the, the individual pieces, can they collaborate? Can they uh, use the mechanics that we're programming in the smart contract to loan the pieces to each other and, uh, and to start recreating the original piece? I actually find uh, the randomized version also quite uh, fascinating because I, I've been working on this for maybe three or four months and so I've seen a lot of variations on the piece visualized with only, let's say, half of the people participating or a quarter or none. And so we're trying to see how we can randomize it or show it in a different way.
Uh, here we see the individual atom. This is uh, the, uh, where each individual square we're calling atoms. And the piece is called 89 seconds atomized. Uh, this is what uh, an individual owner of each square would get as a result, uh, which uh, he feels is actually strong enough where it can be viewed as, a, like, as an art piece on its own. Uh, although each square is only 20 pixel by 20 pixel. So you could uh, create a very tiny TV screen to watch it, or maybe you could expand it on a, la on a larger scale. And it also has, um, it, uh, it carries this atom for the entire 10 minutes and the 10 minute soundtrack of the piece. Uh, the soundtrack is um, uh, created by this guy, Jonathan Bepler, who's uh, uh, just a famous composer. He worked, uh, he for 20 years worked with uh, Matthew Barney and he created uh, scores for his movie. So the, each individual atom also carries this complex soundtrack that goes with it. Uh, here it's kind of hard to see, but this is uh, maybe some examples of what we're we're trying to invent, maybe of ways that this artwork can be, uh, how it can be viewed when people collaborate. In this example, I think something like um, maybe 60% of people choose to p participate and 40 do not choose to participate. So then uh, we need to figure out what to do with these uh, uh, missing squares, whether we just randomize them, randomize them, whether we hide certain digital information out of them, uh, average them as color, it's still kind of an open question uh, how it's ultimately going to be viewed uh, in a kind of a screening setting. And we tried different possibilities. Uh, sometimes we, we initially started with just black squares, but then it has this kind of feel of a Japanese silk screen and uh, looking through the screen. But you still, it's quite uh, interesting to watch, especially the sound still carries quite a bit of uh, an effect. Um, but this is, a, this is an open question. And it's also a question for in a, a more of a decentralization as well, because initially we were thinking that we will be acting as a centralized point for screenings, but ultimately every atom is tokenized and uh, people can create their own screening experiences, they could program their own players, uh, um, and we need to just decide on certain rules of this behavior. Um, we are exploring possibilities because Generally, what we find is that majority of people are lazy. Uh, it's not that they, uh, you know, they will actively choose not to participate. It's just uh, they have other things going on in their lives. And um, we need to either create incentives for them to participate potentially, or we need to punish them for not, participation, not participating. And uh, these are serious questions because what we're dealing with is a kind of individual ownership versus communal ownership. And as an individual, you have full governance over the piece. But once a work is distributed among a community, if somebody chooses not to participate, it, it, it kind of ruins my experience if I do choose to participate. So if uh, only 5%, uh, we anticipate that maybe like just naturally, only maybe f from our conversations with people, uh, in kind of blockchain gaming companies or uh, social networks, they're telling us that uh, active participants are generally something like uh, two to five percent at most. They say if you get five percent, you should be super happy. Uh, and so, what we need to also figure out is maybe some rules. Uh, currently, the smart contract that governs the the loans uh, is written only in a way that it maybe. Uh, at the point of sale or when people are buying these squares, they could choose to be either active or not active or maybe always agree to participate on any loan request, but they have an option to always pull their piece out. Uh, this is just maybe uh, we just decided to go with a m more simpler case initially, but our hope is to maybe create something maybe in future pieces, not necessarily in this artwork, but in uh, future artworks that would allow us to 
make elements that are maybe more fair or um, that would preserve the balance between individual ownership versus uh, communal ownership. Yeah, so I mean, more or less, uh, that's kind of um, what we're working on. Uh, as I said before, we are fairly new and we are exploring the space. We find the ideas that, we're being, that are being mm, pitched to us quite interesting. Uh, some challenge, some notions of blockchain. And we want to explore that as well. Uh, some things sound great uh, just on paper, but uh, to create small use cases uh, in an artistic experiment is actually not as difficult as building some kind of larger use case for a, a company that needs to have the level of security and everything that would you know, create a situation where you have years of uh, development. Here you could create a, a relatively easy use case and challenge some things like, uh, are we really, is this really about truth and transparency or is there a way to um, kind of mess around with the system? Uh, can we, you know, we're, we're working with uh, friends in Brooklyn who are doing, for example, the, you know, the, maybe you know like the foam project uh, which is a kind of a decentralized uh, geolocation system and that uh, proves that, uh, you know, they have uh, this whole, uh, like, essentially token query registries for validating locations or validating points of interest. And this is, uh, again, something that uh, is interesting, but uh, maybe we can create an art experiment around it. Maybe it could be a performance where performance needs to be validated in a specific location or place. Uh, and that's basically what we do at snark.art and uh, this is our first experiment that's gonna go live. It's already up uh, for pre kind of uh, reservation but we're gonna go live in about three four weeks um, and that's it. Yeah. Awesome guys, give a round of applause. I bet you didn't think you'd be learning about art on a, on a Wednesday night at a theory meetup. Uh, let me uh, start a, a few questions here by just asking uh, why, uh, it will, you know, if, if there was a reason why you chose the Ethereum platform uh, for this project. Uh, I think it was just uh, when we started, we had very limited knowledge of uh, developing tools on the blockchain. Um, and this one seemed uh, kind of most maybe documented at the time when we, I mean, we started programming in February. Uh, maybe now there is, uh, you know, for another project, we would consider another uh, plot, uh, another blockchain. But for this one, there was just, uh, for this specific use case, everything was there. Um, we already had uh, uh, smart contracts written by other uh, kind of projects that had the elements that we needed and so it was an easy place to start uh, but uh, again uh, we're open to using other blockchains as well awesome any other questions all right we're gonna come over to you yeah. what does it take for a user to get involved I mean what are the ta tasks that it involves how much time is uh, it's, it doesn't involve any time. I mean, right now, um, uh, if you purchase a token of this specific artwork, uh, it gives you the ability to participate in screenings. And so your, you know, you could um, kind of currently the way it's programmed, you could give up your right uh, to say no. So essentially you accept any loan request. Uh, but we don't know if that's the, the right model, but uh, if you don't choose it initially, then you just have to basically keep watching and then somebody will ask you, can you give me your piece for a day? Like uh, November 17th is my birthday and I want to show this at my house in Kazakhstan. Uh, could you please give me your piece? And uh, the... The loan function also carry, could potentially carry financial compensation, so they could offer you money for your piece. Uh, although our hope is that it's going to be mostly done for free, but we do understand that this work is in major collections. 
and uh, somebody like a Whitney Museum in New York may want to do a show and so they may want to incentivize people to participate and so they may offer some compensation so you'll get I don't know 10 bucks uh, for uh, 10 pounds for you know giving up your piece for a week and so it will just uh, leave your wallet and come back 10 days later um, so that's that's all for this one but for other projects that they're much more active so the project that we're thinking of doing a performance where it has a certain voting mechanism where you have to be constantly following this like narrative and voting through the blockchain as far as the actions that's something that uh, would be more active but this one is just a decision whether or not to participate or not to participate cool any other questions okay coming up right back here Uh, where do you, where do you owners um, come to kind of coordinate to to borrow and lend? Like what platform or what app facilitates that? Uh, it, it's just going to be for now centralized uh, on our platform. I mean, theoretically, uh, the contract will be published, and so then somebody else can create some other place for them to. Uh, let, let's say if there's going to be some kind of blockchain online movie theater and they want to organize a screening they could sit theoretically call these functions but for now it's just going to be on our platform we'll just create like a button where if you're willing to pay the gas it takes to transfer the tokens over into your wallet and send them back a certain number of days later then you'll be able to do so okay any other questions here we go uh, go for it and um, did you delete the original video so we can watch it if everybody collaborates uh, the original video was never released in, uh, in full, so if you Google it right now, I think uh, there's uh, maybe uh, on Vimeo you could watch about a minute and a half okay. of the original. Uh, the video files will be stored, uh, we're going to store it uh, on IPFS and they're going to be, there's still debate whether they should be encrypted or not because ultimately again it's a kind of one of those questions with art whether or not what does it uh, matter that somebody duplicates or sees the file it really becomes about the token ownership but um, what we're discovering at least now there's a like because of Eve is fairly significant artist especially in the, in the New York art scene we have a lot of um, potential buyers for these squares that are from the art world and they they don't like the idea that it's uh, you know sitting there in you know open so we're kind of debating whether or not to encrypt it or not to encrypt it but it's one of those questions that we have to resolve in the next three weeks awesome okay last question then here we go thanks it's not really a question but you mentioned voting a couple of times oh what you mentioned voting a couple of times yeah and there's a really nice ethereum project called arrogant yeah and yeah, yeah you okay. know i would recommend having a look at that because they've just released a really nice ui that you can do like voting and groups yeah it yeah, looks yeah, really yeah. good as well yeah yeah you know we're, we're aware of this project yes thank you okay any final questions here we go back at where we started with steve here we go steve hi that was a very fascinating uh, presentation um Actually, I'm keen to understand or probably you can share some ideas about the business model. Um, how do you intend to roll it out? Um, and will you actually look at the marketplace for selling and buy, uh, buying and selling tokens? Is that something that you've considered? Yeah, I mean, uh, yes. Uh, um yes, we're probably, uh, if anything, uh, uh, these projects at this point are more of an investment. Uh, what we're looking to do is we want to grow a community around SNARK, people who are interested in this type of an experimentation. So for the specific project, we could have a potentially 2,000 people getting involved. It's initially going to be sold on our platform. So we're going to take uh, some percentage of the sales to justify the cost of development. And Do you create a marketplace for buying and selling? Yes, them? yes, of course, yeah. So, yeah, uh, initially the pieces are sold face down, so you don't know uh, which piece you're going to get, but uh, after the initial sale, you'll know, you'll see the provenance of the, all the owners, and then you could make bids, or if you own a piece, you could offer it uh, to buy and sell. That's one uh, monetization strategy. Another monetization, for example, for... 
uh, performance work where there isn't anything like an artifact or maybe actually there may be artifacts that may be sold they might be physical or non-physical we don't know but uh, we are looking into some idea of some kind of token economics where um, maybe initially we'll give out some tokens so people can um, kind of uh, direct the behavior but uh, Ultimately, we also want to create a marketplace for those tokens to justify the cost of development for these projects. That's where the real value is mm -hmm. in your proposition, is creating that marketplace. Yeah. Because that's where the interest will come in. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, give me a round of applause, everybody. Okay.